Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we are shifting our focus from FIFA 22 to FIFA 23, and we're going to be taking a look at some of the biggest leaks and information that you need to know to get ready for FIFA 23. Now, this is not confirmed. This is not actually shown by EA Sports. They haven't held any sort of like price release or been at any sort of games conference to talk about FIFA 23 news and information just yet, which is a bit disappointing. But as with how everything has been in FIFA 22, with all of our leaks, right, we have some leaks about FIFA 23, and I think we can put a bit, a bit of trust in those because leaks this year have been so accurate and there's a lot of really interesting stuff. There's some big changes coming to FIFA 23 and that's what I want to talk about today. Chemistry system rework, position changes are, are changing it up, uh, new heroes, new icons, a whole next gen possibility with you know PC, Xbox, and PlayStation all being able to match each other, and that would probably be in one market as well. So we have to talk all about that in today's video. There's there's seriously tons to cover. So I want to get right into it. If you're enjoying the videos on the channel and if you're excited for FIFA 23, hit the thumbs up and of course subscribe if you're new. Let's just start from the top with probably the biggest leak for FIFA 23. That is the chemistry system rework. Now, again, we can trust some of these leaks. We can put some um, trust in them because these leaks have been so accurate and the guys that have been leaking stuff correctly all year long are back here leaking it again. As you can see, this is confirmed by Foot Sheriff, of course, but Weaver tweets out that there is a chemistry system rework. And it looks like every nation and league works with every nation and league. So you could link yourself a Lionel Messi PSG card with a Cristiano Ronaldo Manchester United, and that would be a link. And that would no longer be like a red link in FIFA. You would at least get like a weak link, I guess, uh, is what it seems. But really, this is a huge unknown. This is a huge, huge change because no longer are we going to try to get 100 chemistry, right? Uh, a number out of 10 for each player, right? Trying to get to 100 for the full squad. It's being replaced by stars and a team can get up to three stars. So I'm guessing that you'll still have to have a couple of like actual links in your team or like cards from the same league, same nation to get help with that stars, I would assume. But this, the, the biggest thing about this is everybody's going to be able to link so many more cards together in their teams. And I think one of the comments that I saw on here said it best. Mr. French says, finally, the current chemistry is bad for the game. It restricts so many possibilities. That's the biggest positive, I think, to this is that it just opens up the possibility of linking like almost whoever you want in your team. Now, I think there are a couple downsides to that and there will be some a hype loss from that as well. But I'll talk about this first. I mean, just imagine you can put on your team uh, you know, like this Rodrigo card, and I, I would be able to link him to the, the Hakimi that's my right back. Or I would be able to link Mbappe with um, with Alfonso Davies, and, you know, I would get chemistry there, right? That's something, that's how it sounds like it'll be in FIFA 23 with the way that chemistry is changing, right? Of course, every time this year when we're building our squads, we're trying to get those green links and, you know, get enough links and with the formation change, with position changes, we have to get to 10 chemistry or 100 squad, 100 chemistry on the team. But it sounds like that's going to be replaced with a star system. So I think it does open up a broad range of possibilities. I think that is great. But I also think there's some downsides to this. I want to talk about this too. Now, part of the fun with building a squad and building a team and, you know, having like a hybrid team and stuff like that, like some of the links that I had in, in my squad right there, part of the fun in that is just being able to, you know, like build the squad and, and have the fun of putting a team together, trying some cards out. And, you know, this is my main team at the moment. If I get R9 back in here, you know, I, I've got a lot of strong links in this squad. I've got a lot of players that need the chemistry of other players in here on a strong link to get full chemistry, like Conte needs Varane's strong link to get chem or, you know, uh, you know, stuff like that. So also that people are like, what does that mean for icons? Because icons become less relevant then, if especially if they're behind the power curve, because the, one of the biggest pulls to icons in this game was that they had links to literally everybody and strong links via the nation. So that's the biggest, I think, uh, parts that we're confused about, like how in the world are icons going to work? And also like, where's going to be the fun in squad building if it's so easy to link everybody together? Like, is there going to be a need for like a cool hybrid and, you, you know, using different teams? 
Um, some people are like, okay, it's just going to mean everybody's going to use the meta cards. Everybody uses the most meta cards anyway in FIFA. So regardless of how the chemistry system works, there's going to be a way that people are going to find to get the most meta cards into a squad together and make it work, right? That's the bottom line. So those are kind of my thoughts on that. Let me know down in the comments for all of this stuff, what you guys think about these leaks. Let's move on to the next thing. This one's just equally as big in my opinion. Position modifiers are changing for FIFA 23. This also affects squad building, by the way. There are no specific position modifiers in the game. Every player has a primary position, and most of them have a secondary position. Now, this is something that I've seen before, especially in, like, kickoff mode. If you go into kickoff mode, and it might even show in FIFA, like, if you're actually in a game, and you can click on a player if you want to substitute them and, like, use the right stick to mouse around, and you can see their secondary positions that are listed. Now, that has always been something in the game. Like, that is there, right? But we've always, like, that has never impacted in Ultimate Team the card's position um, because we have these position modifiers, card consumables that you would tack onto a player depending on that player's position and be able to move them for squad building purposes and getting chemistry. So if chemistry is changing, it makes sense that this could be changing as well. Uh, again, like this example here, Cancelo's position because he has two positions, right? He's got the left back and the right back position in his like profile in his bio in FIFA. Um, you know, it sounds like there's two ways that this, this could go about. The first way is position modifier cards are completely gone. Like if you would just go into FIFA, I could see there being a way where you would be able to go in and like click in onto my Lukas Paqueta, right? Whose base position is center attacking mid, but maybe there'll be a button in here or I can go over to like player bio and it'll allow me to change his position somewhere in here or something like that. Or maybe even if on the card, like there's a way we can like press a button and then change the position that way. Like that's how it would make the most sense to me for this to work. Um, I, I, I could see that being a possibility. I guess that's, that's the possibility saying that there is no position cards on the market. That literally could be what it is. I don't think that's been confirmed or denied yet. Um, as you can see here, there's no specific position modifiers in the game. It's all based off the players. So the first way is we could just adjust it on the card, depending on what different secondary positions that player has, we just adjust it. And the other option would be there are still position change cards on the market, but they're like specific to each player. And that would be a whole big mess. So really what it comes down to is does EA still want to have position modifiers to be in the game for um, like pack filler, you know, like they have to keep stuff in packs. You know, they can't just put all players in packs. Think about last year, right? FIFA 22, they removed, or not even last year, a couple years ago, they removed fitness, right? So the, all those little squad fitness cards, the plus 30 fitness per player, all of those were no longer in packs. So what they had to do was increase the pack weight on all of like the other consumables. You know, some of the club items, some of those TFOs and the stadiums and stuff like that. Those have definitely seen an increase in pack weight this year. You know, like the pitch colors on all that sort of stuff. If they were to take position modifiers out of packs and just make it a per card thing, then they would have to probably be thinking about adding in more pack filler. I'm just thinking about that from their perspective. What other of these cards, consumable items, are they going to put back into packs to kind of keep the packs, you know, the same way that they are? Uh, in my opinion, this is a W. Also, though, there are a few L's to this, though. And this whole conversation of is this position change stuff going to be a W or not? Here's the biggest problem. A guy like my Ben Yedder, this is going to, this is like the flip side, right? They're making maybe squad building a little bit easier with uh, a chemistry re rework, but they're also gonna make it maybe a little bit harder with not being able to position change some of these central players, right? In my squad right now, for the chemistry that I need, I have to have this Ben Yedder um, in the midfield, get that Varane French link, right? And I have to basically have him and Paqueta switch, right? So if I moved Ben Yedder to striker and Paqueta into the midfield, I would not get full chemistry on both of those players. But since I can move a central player from CDM all the way to striker, uh, in this FIFA with position change cards, I can do this. I think the biggest problem you're going to have with an update to position changes is basically this right here. Moving a striker whose secondary position is most often or very unlikely going to be a midfield spot, moving a player like that for chemistry reasons in your squad. But 
depending on how the new chemistry system rework is, that might not be much of a problem if you can put whoever you want in your team and that sort of thing. So that's those two things combined are going to be 100% the biggest changes this year in FIFA 23, trying to wrap our heads around what does that even mean? Like for squad building and for putting squads together and stuff like that. We've had the same system for years and years with the chemistry out of 100 and with the position changes just being on the market, buying them and applying them to the card. So this is gonna be a cool change, but we're gonna have to adapt and we're gonna have to see how it looks. And of course, when EA starts to tweet more about this themselves, then we're gonna get some better information. But what it is also gonna do too, is it's gonna save people some coins, right? You think about position change cards, like the cam to center mid that are 4,500 coins a piece, center mid to cam, 3,500 coins a piece. You know, you're gonna be able to save some coins on some of this stuff um and and moving your your players around just like you saved coins back in a couple years ago when they removed fitness and you didn't have to buy those squad fitness cards anymore for your team and stuff like that I, there's going to be a point i think where they remove contracts as well it's just almost inevitable they're they're really trying to push more of like the stadium items stuff um and instead of having like those sort of you know consumable type items in the game i really feel like they're trying to push the stadium the kits the tifos the customization aspect of this game i think they're going to take that to a new level in fifa 23 as well and this is just one of the ways where they can get people to focus on that a little bit more instead of maybe the squad building and make it easier to build squads so that people will focus uh, a little bit less on that and more on like the pay to skin aspect um, of ultimate team as well so those are the two biggest leaks 100 percent but there's a lot more let's keep rolling through it a lot more information to talk about now this one we're going to take this with a grain of salt but i wanted to show it just because i've seen a couple people talk about it and it is pretty crazy uh this is from a leak account that is sometimes right but a lot of times wrong um fiva 23 he says you will get wins if someone quits or disconnects when it is a draw this will be present in divisions friendlies and in the core game modes so, uh, that's kind of crazy, which a W, right? A W in terms of crazy, but uh, you know what? I, I don't know if I can believe this quite yet, but I wanted to talk about this because I know you guys have seen this tweet. This is a very popular Twitter account. I know people are expecting this and talking about it. I would not go into the game expecting this to happen. If EA says it's going to happen, then we'll get excited about it then and we'll be very happy about it. But for now, maintain some professional skepticism, in my opinion, about this. Moving on, though, to some more, more uh, I guess, concrete leaks. We have to talk about icons and heroes because there's a lot of issues, and or not issues, but a lot of big names going to be happening this year with FIFA. Maradona still in the game for FIFA 23 after being removed from packs. Same with Overmars and Van Basten, who both had some issues this last year where they were removed from packs for a short amount of time, or EA kind of like said, we're going to distance ourselves for a second. But Maradona back in the game, Overmars, Van Basten still staying. And then a couple new heroes, actually more than a couple, a lot of new heroes and icons. Big names. EA Sports, this, this is a big W, I can't lie. Yaya Toure, Peter Crouch, Marquisio, Diego Simeone, Park Ji Sung, Rafa Marquez, Lucio, Dirk Kite. I mean, that's a very nice list of heroes uh, coming to the game this year with FIFA 23. I would expect all these cards to be starting off in packs at the beginning of the year, just like the heroes did last year. I love that they're adding more and more and more of these in. It's kind of like, you know, it's kind of like a, another promo that starts at the beginning of the year with all the cards that they're adding in, but they have that like icon kind of feel as well. They're just maybe not quite an icon, but they're still pretty dope. So it's all going to come down to stats for a guy like Toure, guy like Marquisio, Park Ji Sung. You know, there's going to be some cool cards in here though, and hopefully EA do their stats up very, very nicely. Now on the topic of new cards, we have a couple new icons as well. We thought we were getting DiStefano this year in FIFA 22. He never dropped, but he is still added into the code and the database. So that has people thinking that he might be added in this next year in FIFA 23. And also David Villa. That's another pretty big icon name. And guess what? There's even one more. It is Batistuta. Will he be an icon or hero? That's not 100% confirmed. I kind of hope he's an icon. That would be nice. Uh, to get this guy as an icon, but that th these are our three icons that we expect: Batistuta, um, either as a hero or an icon, and then David Villa and Di Stefano. So those are some of the biggest leaks in terms of the 
uh, new cards coming in. But again, some of these hero cards are freaking dope, man. Yaya Toure, Peter Crouch, Marquisio, Park Ji Sung. Like, there's a lot of potential with these cards. If EA juice them up correctly, there's going to be a lot of hype with that there. Now, last big talking point to cover in the game today. Cross play next gen only cross play all game modes and a cross play one transfer market so yes we've talked a lot about cross platform yes we've talked about ps um and xbox being able to match each other and that's dope right that's really cool that also probably means one market which donk mentions there uh but the weird information and the weird news that we had and i think if i go back out into the fifa main menus you can see this uh like it'll give you an option like if I click uh, right to or R2 down on my controller, you know, I can opt in and out on cross play for some of these guys that are playing and stuff like that. Um, it sounds like cross play is only available for next gen, which would be the new Xbox, PS5 and PC is going to be a part of next gen. So, you know, the Xbox one and the PlayStation 4 sounds like it'll be separate in terms of gameplay, but I do imagine that since the Xbox market between Xbox, uh, the new one, I always forget the name, Xbox Series X or, or whatever it is, the new Xbox and Xbox One, they're on the same market. PS4 and PS5 are on the same market. So I would imagine that it is one universal market for everything this next year. I think that's going to be the way that it is set up. If there's going to be cross-platform gameplay, I would imagine there's going to be cross-platform market as well. I know that's, I think, still kind of not confirmed. Um, I want to see EA Sports talk about that specifically. Um, and that's probably something that we won't learn about until like August because a lot of the little features like that in Ultimate Team they don't talk about right away. Uh, but that's pretty big, right? That's really, really big. Also, World Cup mode returning of course it's a world cup year and it's going to be so interesting and i've talked about this a lot and i can't wait to hear about how ea is going to do this and bring this out during the world cup time but the world cup being in november december this year is going to completely change how fifa ultimate team is going to go because instead of it being in the summer when the game is kind of done it's going to be in the heart in the heat in like the the biggest part of the game the first couple months of fifa we're going to have a World Cup mode. That's going to be really interesting to see how EA incorporate that with Ultimate Team and kind of mesh those two together and get people hyped. But also having a standalone World Cup mode. Uh, the J League is going to be removed, but Piemonte Calcio is going to be back. So no more white shirt dynamic images um, for all of your Juve players. Now Pogba. Pogba is going to get a Juve, Juve dynamic. Uh, new animation captures and PC, PC next gen gameplay so to be completely honest all of these changes wrapped up and talked about i mean the biggest ones 100 percent are going to be the squad building and of course the chemistry that's 100 percent because think about it that's going to impact every single person on fifa you go to build a squad if it's completely different some people are going to be put off by it some people are going to be confused hopefully ea do a really really good job of you know explaining the system to us and just showing us how it works exactly ahead of time so that we don't get confused and don't feel like, um, you know, you know, when you don't understand something, you just like, you know, you don't want to be a part of it or you just want to say, man, that's too hard to try to figure out. I don't want to be a part of it. So if EA is being smart, then they need to make it easy to understand and they need to make it so that they're telling us very clearly from the start how it is going to work. That's what I'm looking forward to with all of that sort of information and news. And hopefully EA start confirming some of these stuff, man. I mean, it's late June now and we don't have any information about FIFA 23 yet besides officially from EA. Uh, all we have is these leaks. So it's quite the interesting time right now, but let me know what you guys think about these leaks. I mean, seriously, there's a lot of thoughts and a lot of things like what, what's going to happen with SBC chemistry, right? If we have no more chemistry, like out of 100, how is EA going to make SBCs harder, right? We're going to have to talk about that more in depth later on down the line. What are they going to do for chemistry inside of SBCs? You know, uh, what are they going to do for like that pack filler? Are they just going to up the pack weight if they're taking all the position change cards out and it's going to be just on the card you change the position? Uh, how are packs going to be adjusted? Are they going to add more stadium items in? What's going to go on with that? So there's a lot of unknowns still with a ton of this, but it is good to get the basics down and good to get the leaks talked about and to kind of get our minds ready for what is coming this next year, three months away, two months away in uh, FIFA 23. So again, drop in the comments what you think about all this. And if you enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up on it. And of course, subscribe if you are new. It has been Nate for the count and I'll catch you guys later. Peace.